Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and Happy Halloween! And I'm going to talk to you about the Mexican Grand Prix of 2022, which is a day late, but I wasn't here. I hadn't watched it yesterday. I've actually just sat down and watched it now. Not a lot to say about the actual race. This may be the worst Formula One race of 2022. It was so boring, so little happened. There is nothing really to say, nothing really affects the championship majorly. There's a few things, but it's not going to take long to talk about the race. Um, what I will say is, Max Verstappen has now broken the number of wins in a season record. One of the first records he's taken off Lewis Hamilton. Will we see this as a pattern in the future? Will he completely destroy Lewis Hamilton's legacy? I think it'll be difficult. You're talking about Red Bull really having 10 years of dominance. I think they haven't really got that much of a stranglehold on the championship. I think it looks better than it is. But this has been an incredible season for Max Verstappen. I think he's proven everyone wrong. I think everyone who's saying he didn't deserve to be champion last year has definitely been proven to be at least partially stupid. Doesn't matter that it ended in controversial circumstances. He was there at the end as champion and it should be done. And hopefully now, after the ruling from the budget cap rules, thing breaking, cost cap, whatever, it should be done. It's over. Max Verstappen is a two-time world champion. And in this race, he never really looked troubled. Early part of the race, Hamilton was on his tail. Regardless of Mercedes making the wrong tyre choice, look, Max Verstappen pretty much ran away with it after that. Great drive from him. Some questions about his transmission and I guess his gearbox. Lewis Hamilton as well. Great drive for second, but he may have engine issues. It'll be interesting to see if that affects them in Brazil, whether they'll have to take grid penalties and change parts. Doesn't really affect Max Verstappen too much because obviously he's sewn everything up anyway, and Red Bull have also sewn everything up. In fact, it may help Sergio Perez in his fight for second in the championship. Other than that, the top three all put in good drives. It was kind of a shame not to see Sergio Perez on the top step, but at least he got on the podium. It would have been nice to see him challenge Lewis Hamilton at least a little bit towards the end, but it didn't happen. And that was really the problem with the Mexican Grand Prix was there was very little on-track fighting. In fact, I don't think the top six changed positions outside of the pit stops at any point. And none of them were really close to each other. So this was not an exciting race. And Ferrari, very disappointing. Very, It looked like they had no pace whatsoever. They could not hold on to the backs of the Mercedes. Fifth and sixth, it looks like last year, to be honest. They have completely blown their chance of championships this year. And I think at the start, they were in a strong position and it's all just gone wrong. Charles Leclerc had another crash in practice as well. I don't think it was a problem with his car. I think it was just a mistake. Very, very disappointing. Um... Beyond the main teams, Daniel Ricciardo finished 7th and put in a fantastic drive, even via taking out Yuki Tsunoda in a very clumsy move. He got a 10 second penalty for that and yet he pulled away from Esteban Ocon once he overtook him and he kept his 7th. So, brilliant drive and a good day for McLaren because not only did Daniel Ricciardo beat Ocon, but Norris got into the points in ninth. although it is a bit of a disappointing drive from him, he seemed to lack pace all weekend. And Alonso retired towards the end of the race with an engine issue, which again may mean penalties at the next race. And it keeps McLaren fairly safe in the fight for the Constructors, which is fourth in the Constructors. I think they're going to do it. I think they've got a fairly big gap over Alpine. I can't really remember what the actual points are. But Norris, he's almost certain of finishing seventh in the championship now and with a fair lead over Alpine. If Ricardo, Ricardo, if Ricardo can score some points, he'll be backing him up, no issue. This race, no one really finished. We didn't think they were gonna finish. The top 10 was populated by Red Bull, Mercedes, Ferrari, McLaren, and one Alpine. If Alonso had finished, those five teams would have taken up the points with everyone else not scoring. Bottas managed to get a point for Alfa Romeo, although towards the end he looked sluggish. And beyond that, Alfa Tori, Aston Martin, Williams and Haas did not score any points, nor did the other Alfa Romeo. Very much this race 
kind of everyone finished as you expected them to. It's not it's not very exciting. The only other retirement was Yuki Tsunoda after he got knocked out by Ricardo. But he, had, he probably wouldn't have finished in the points anyway. So it's not a massive loss for him other than the damage caused. There were drivers who put in good performances, but pretty much everyone was anonymous here. Like, there was no great drives from the back end of the grid. And I don't know if that's the track, the cars, whatever. This was just a very, very dull race. Off the track, there's nothing really special happening. It's the cost cap ruling. It was a $7 million fine and like a 10% reduction in wind tunnel usage. Stuff like that. Red Bull say it's too much. Every other team says it's not enough. Obviously, that was going to happen. Is it fair? Probably. I don't know. Honestly, I mean, Christian Horner claims it'll cost them half a second in lap time. Will it, though? I mean, they still have Adrian Newey on staff, and he's capable of some pretty special things. I don't think it's a massive loss for them, really. But then again, we're talking thousands of a second making a big difference, so... We'll have to see how that plays out and if that was a fair punishment. And I'm sure every other team will disagree anyway. There is literally nothing else to talk about, really. Um, so, yeah, so we'll get to the main point of this video. Ted Kravitz, he made a pretty dumb comment. And I've actually forgotten what that comment was. But he suggested that Max Verstappen didn't deserve to be champion, or that Lewis Hamilton was robbed of the championship. Now Max Verstappen won't talk to Sky Sports. That's pretty bad for them. They are the main coverage provider. I don't know about the rest of the world, but definitely in Britain. So, your two-time reigning world champion will not talk to the main broadcasters. That's bad, because one person who... In my opinion, should be impartial, was not impartial. Is that a sackable offence? Not really. I mean, let's call it a first offence and maybe give him a warning. The reason I think Ted Kravitz should be sacked is that I think most of the people in the British coverage and I guess the Sky Sports coverage as a wider thing should be sacked because the coverage on Sky Sports is terrible. The commentators, the tracks are like whatever you call it, the off-track analysis guys, Every bit of it is terrible. I actually watched the Mexican Grand Prix with the American commentary through no fault of my own, and it was actually a complete accident, but it is 10 times better than the British coverage. They're insightful, they make worthwhile comments, they cover every bit of action that's actually going on on the track. They'll talk about drivers lower down the field. They won't just talk about Lewis Hamilton for half an hour every race. They talk about Lewis Hamilton when he's making comments on the radio or when he's doing something on track. That's about it. There wasn't too much Lewis Hamilton talk in this race. And you can't say that about the British coverage because they constantly go on about Lewis Hamilton, even when he's not doing anything. Very, very frustrating coverage to British commentary team. Honestly, Martin Brundle should retire because he doesn't seem to have any passion left in him. I'm actually watching a lot of racing from the late 80s and early 90s at the moment because I did the video on Coloni, which obviously covered that period, and also JJ Leto as well, a little bit, going a little bit later than Coloni. So I've been watch. I started watching a few races as research, and then I sort of just carried on because it's actually a very enjoyable period of Formula One. And what you can say about that period is Murray Walker is, or was, such an incredible commentator. He was the master. There really hasn't been anyone better. And I would actually risk saying there has never been a better commentator in the world than Murray Walker, at least in motorsport circles. What's special about Murray Walker is you could go back and watch stuff he commentated in the 1950s and stuff later in his career. I know he retired from touring cars in, after 97. I can't actually remember when he stopped doing Formula One. Was it like early to mid 2000s? He was as passionate at the beginning as he was at the end never ever stopped loving motorsport in any fashion and you know what he was a passionate whether it was formula one or british touring cars or rally cross any motorsport he was watching he was passionate about it and even surprisingly when he was with james hunt now i've noticed from reading murray walker's book which is a very dull book 
because he has nothing bad to say about anything. He's a very happy man. And the only time he really moans about anything is James Hunt, when James Hunt first started doing commentary and he was turning up late for races and being half cut and he was a pain to work with and I imagine he was a massive pain in the ass to work with. And I think they got on better later on, but at the beginning it was a very difficult relationship. But James Hunt very often sounded disinterested about the racing and he would criticise drivers. Murray Walker would talk about British drivers a bit more enthusiastically than others sometimes. Like he'd talk about the British drivers at the British Grand Prix quite a lot or he'll mention Nigel Mansell throughout the race. Thing is though, he'd also mention Senna and Prost and PK and even drivers way, way, way further down the grid. Like one of the earliest clips I've used on this channel was when Gabrielli Tarquini retired in an AGS. Murray Walker talks about Gabrielli Tarquini for a bit and he says, this guy is great and he deserves a better drive than what AGS can give him. That's the sort of commentary you want. And I, you just don't get that from the commentary now. And Martin Brundle is, he just seems less infused. So maybe it's time for him to walk away and give someone else a chance. Ted Kravitz after this, yes, I think he should be sacked. Firstly, because the coverage in general is terrible and can do with some fresh blood. That's why I was never really that fussed about Naomi Schiff coming aboard. Yes, she hasn't got a lot of motor racing experience, but at least she's different. Because Nico Rosberg, he's always going to glamorise how great Mercedes are because I'm fairly certain he's still an employee in some role, like an ambassadorial role. At the very least, he has very good feelings from Mercedes and he'll talk about them positively no matter what. Get rid of Ted Kravitz. He cannot be impartial, therefore he shouldn't be part of your coverage. Get in someone else, younger, maybe someone European. Maybe find an ex-European Formula 1 driver who can talk and is a little bit charismatic. Get them to do it. I'm sure there's a lot of ex-drivers who you offer a paycheck to will come and do your Formula 1 coverage. I'd compare it to football. You get pundits like Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher. They're not very good pundits because they clearly have a bias towards the teams they play for. Like Gary Neville will never say anything too bad about Man United. Jamie Carragher won't say anything too bad about Liverpool. They'll argue with each other about it as well. And they even they do sometimes pick apart the teams when they do play badly. But generally, they're fairly positive towards their respective teams. Whereas, if you have someone like Micah Richards, who is a very good pundit, and you see him on Match of the Day, and he covers football very well, or Sky Sports News, whatever, or whatever that program is, Micah Richards is very, very good at his job, and he's probably one of the better pundits in football at the moment because he's a lot more impartial and he just talks about the football and he can talk enthusiastically and knowledgeable about the subject he's talking about so he's just a much better pundit than those around him sometimes that's what you need for the formula one coverage is someone who can do that just be impartial and knowledgeable that's all you need and enthusiastic i guess it shouldn't be too hard, but honestly, the coverage is terrible. And Ted Kravitz, along with a few others, should go. And in a position where the most important man in Formula 1 at the moment, he's not talking to your entire company because of one guy, that guy should be gone. That is a massive thing for Sky Sports to deal with. They're going to have to woo Max Verstappen back. They're probably going to have to woo Red Bull as well. Because... Talking to your world champion is a big part of your coverage, and if he's not talking to you, what worth does your coverage have? The racing was not amazing, it was not a great Grand Prix, but I look forward to the Brazilian Grand Prix into Lagos, it's one of my favourite tracks. It's in two weeks time I think, and we've only got two races left. Not a whole lot to really fight for. The fight for second is really between Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc, they're fairly close. George Russell is in fourth, he can still be caught by Lewis Hamilton and Carlos Sainz. So the battle for fourth is on as well. Beyond that, we still have McLaren versus Alpine. And really, Aston Martin versus Alfa Romeo is the only other one. And it'll be interesting to see if those teams can just pick up any points. So I'll leave you with that. And you can tell me I'm wrong in the comments. You can tell me it's unfair to get rid of Ted Kravitz or I shouldn't be suggesting he gets the sack. So with that, make sure you subscribe. There will be a Halloween video, or at least a Halloween themed video later on today, hopefully. There'll be something on the motorsport games maybe later in the week. And 
I'll be putting out like a weekend roundup video, hopefully tomorrow, but maybe Wednesday. We'll see how I get on. So with that, thank you for watching. Have a good one.